Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 38 of the platform specific series of my 6502 assembly programming tutorials. Today we're looking at the PET again, and this time we're going to be looking at bitmap graphics. Now, I put bitmap in quotes there because um, we're actually using character blocks to show our character. Uh, this is our Chibiko character, which is the mascot for my YouTube channel. You can see it just here as well. And um, today's example is being done with character blocks. So each of these um, two by two pixel squares is being done by a character within the character map. And if you want to create a byte form file format that has the correct character block numbers for a bitmap, you can use my AccuSprite editor. This is what I used. This pet option here, save raw bitmap, will output the correct file. You can just see that option just there, that will create the correct file for today's example. Now, the character map itself, um, you can see the entire range of possible characters here. Basically, the pet has no bitmap graphics at all, um, and it also can't do color. So it's only black and green, and each um, location can only have one of these 255 possible characters. And you'll notice that it's actually 128 characters, where the top bit is one, though those characters are inverted. So that's our character set. Now, the early pet had this character set. The later ones introduced a second character set, and we can switch between the two by writing either 12 or 14 to memory address E84C. So uh, this is the default one, right, which only has uppercase. This is the alternate one, which has lower and uppercase in the later models. The uh, character blocks graph that we're using for our graphics today actually exist on both, though, which is quite interesting. So the, today's example will work the same on either. OK, well, let's go over to our source code and let's have a look at today's example then. If we just go over here. OK, so we've got two examples. The first one is the one that shows all of the possible characters to the screen. So if we just run this here, if we just run this now, you can see it's starting up here. And so this is all of the possible characters just being shown to the screen. And you can see we did actually enable that alternate character set there by writing 14 to E84C there. So we've got that lowercase characters there and the uppercase ones. Now, writing to VRAM is very easy on the pet. Um, it's literally just memory address 8000 onwards. So any byte that we write there will appear as a character immediately on the screen. So that's all that example has done. Now, this is the original pet. If we change and we go to the alternate one, if I just change the pet model here and I change to the um, 8000 series, I get a funny noise. I'm not sure I appreciated that. And then if we just load up again, well, you will see now that the, the example has actually gone wrong. Now, the reason for this is that this system has an 80 character widescreen rather than the default 40. Um, I couldn't actually find a way of detecting which system you were running on. I, I read some documentation that just seemed to say, well, check the bytes of the ROM and see if they match the system you're expecting, which was a bit like, well, that's very vague. I'm not sure that's the ideal solution, but it, it seems that there's no um, no particularly um, document defined way of detecting which system you're running on. But obviously, if our system's expecting an 80 character wide screen and it runs on 40, it's going to go wrong. And if it's this was expecting a 40 character wide screen and um, there's twice as much VRAM, so it doesn't work. Now, each um, character in VRAM is a consecutive horizontal byte. So um, there's 40 characters wide normally. And so those are just 40 consecutive bytes. And the 40 first one will be the next line down on the far left of the screen. Very easy layout to work with. So that's what we're doing. And um, our example will reflect that. Now, we've got two functions here which match what I often use. We've got get VDP screen pass, which will calculate a memory address in VRAM. And we've got get next line, which will move one line down in VRAM. And these are oh, something I often use. Now, it's very easy to calculate a video address on this system, because I'll say it's a very basic system. Our formula is just the base of the screen, hexadecimal 8000, plus the Y position times the width of the screen. So Y pos times either 80 for the wide screen or 40 for the smaller screen. And that will calculate the line of the screen. And then we just add the X position. And of course, it's just one byte per character. So that is calculating the VRAM address of a character based on an X, Y position. And when we want to move down the line, we just add either 80 or 40 to our destination address. Now I'm using a zero page pair, which I've marked as ZDE here, ZD and ZE. And those are the address for our destination. I've got another one, which is our source bitmap, which is zero page entry HL. These are matching Z80 type registers. And we've got our bitmap here. 
A bitmap here is this raw pet file, which is that Chibico bitmap, which I mentioned earlier, which I exported from here. So that's the character numbers. Uh, we've also got an alternative example, which is bit patterns, and we've got these, and we'll have a look at those in just a moment. So when we want to show a bitmap with this example, we are specifying the source bitmap, the width and height in character blocks here, which is effectively half the pixel resolution. The Chibico is 48 by 48. Each character block has two pixels in it in both directions, so it becomes 24 by 24. We then specify an, an X and a Y position. We're offsetting by eight horizontal blocks and uh, very top of the screen. Using get VDP screen post to calculate the destination in ZDE, in zero page ZDE, loading the source bitmap, and then we're running show bitmap. And what show bitmap does is it will transfer one line of bytes from the source to the destination. When that's done, it will then move down one line and it will do that again until we've finished the bitmap. That's looping to show the next line. And once it's done, it returns. We're doing it once here to show the Chibico, and we're doing it one more time to show this bit pattern data. And what this is, is this is every possible permutation and combination of the two by two character blocks. And I had to work these out. I actually worked them out by hand because I couldn't I couldn't see any um, byte combination that um, defined which character was which in the sequence. So I just manually worked them out from the um, character display you saw here. I just looked them all up and tested them with this example. So what we've got here is some byte data that's being shown to the screen in the exact same way as the raw bitmap data was. But um, obviously it's quite different now. Um, one thing you do need to know is these X characters here don't appear as an X because it's not ASCII. They are actually appearing as this club symbol here. And so this hexadecimal 60 here is this space here. This hexadecimal 70 is that top block there. And then what I've done with all of these across here is um, consecutively gone through every possible bit combination as if they were a four bit nibble. And then what I've done in the AcroSprite editor is I've programmed these this sequence of character blocks in and I've converted the bits of a two by two square into those character blocks. And that's how we've shown the Chibico bitmap you can see just here. So this is the example running on this system here. Um, one interesting thing though, if I change, if I go up here and I enable this, now we are now going to switch to the alternate character set. And if this system has it, we will see our font changes to lowercase it has. So this is now lowercase and those clubs have now changed to X's. Um, the interesting thing though, is that um, actually the character blocks are all the same because they are actually represented. Although a lot of the characters have changed in our character map, the um, character blocks themselves are in the exact same position. So they still work exactly the same. Now, the other interesting thing to notice, if I just go down to the combination of the character blocks here is of course that um, anything over hexadecimal 80 is being inverted and we can't make up our full 16 character blocks that we need for every permutation of that two by two grid without also using the inverted blocks. So you can see here, we've got that block there, but the only version that represents the opposite of that is the inverted one here, which is, don't get me wrong, completely logical from the point of view of saving those character blocks. But as I say, it, it, we do have to use those inverted ones to make our full set up. And that's what we've done. So there we go. So writing to VRAM is very straightforward. Now, now on this example here, we've run this on our 40 by 25 screen, but we can actually um, reconfigure this to work on the 80 by 25 screen. I've just done that there, but we're still running on the old machine. So you can see it's all messed up and half the lines are missing because the system actually has twice as much VRAM on the 80 by 25. But if I change this and I change the pet model, I change this to an 8000 series. I think that one probably do it. Yeah, there we go. So we're now on the double width screen. Um, and then if we just reload our program. Well, there we go. We can now see that the Chibico is being displayed again. The um, system does have some quirks. You can see that there's actually a space between the lines. This system, I believe, was designed as a more professional machine. So they've, they've put the space between the lines. There is some um, codes you can send to the screen hardware to switch that off, I believe. But anyway, as I say, you, you can see it's very easy to write to the screen on both of these systems and just show a simple little bitmap. There we go. Anyway, um, as always, if you liked what you see, please go to my website and download the source code. You can also download the AcroSprite editor and make your own sprites. So hopefully you can have some fun with that. 
Anyway, if you like what we've seen, please like and subscribe. If you like the videos, YouTube recommends them to more people, and that means that I will hopefully get more views and I'll make more videos in the future. And if you subscribe, you'll see all of the other content that I've got planned because I'm planning some more pet tutorials down the line. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.